I want you to describe what it means to you to see the decline in hospitalizations across America. What does that signal? Yeah, I certainly think that uh, we're seeing great signals of, you know, initial rollouts of the vaccine. Also, uh, people are doubling down uh, new data from the CDC about appropriate mask wearing, the types of masks, double masking in some circumstances. Uh, new data about the way schools can reopen. I think it's a positive trend for sure, and the healthcare system is taking us a big, deep breath of relief. Is there a trend that you can glean where you can say, a la Jess Staley of Barclays, where New York City will move from 25 percent restaurant occupancy to, say, 50 or 75 percent? Can you, can you link the two trends, medical and social, together, or is that not possible? Well, well, certainly um, the pressure will mount from the population around o greater open and greater liberties um, associated with uh, removing these restrictions uh, as case numbers fall. But uh, I, I would just implore everyone to be patient. So we really need to get the, the vaccine in people's arms in a greater proportion of cases before we begin <clears throat> Uh, major rollbacks. We The variants continue to take hold, and we continue to see more and more variants across the U.S., and we need to get ahead of those variants before we roll back those restrictions. Jason, let's say you're lucky enough to get inoculated like one Tom Keen. You get both shots in your arm, and then what? What changes for you if you're still wearing a mask? You still have to socially distance. You still have to potentially protect yourself from infecting other people because supposedly we don't know whether that person could contract the virus and then be contagious. What changes? Yeah, that's an excellent question, Lisa. So uh, a few things change. So the CDC has said that if you've received both doses and you've, or, or one in the case of J&J, &J, and you've moved beyond the window of antibody development, so two weeks for the two-shot uh, dose, 28 days for the J&J &J dose, uh, you now have a substantial level of immunity that may prevent you from needing to quarantine if exposed. So that's the first major thing. So if you're about and you're notified that you had a contact with someone who tested positive, you can go about life as normal. So that's big, uh, particularly for the workforce. Second thing I think that changes is this sense of a you know, collective sigh of relief. We know that it prevents 100 percent of hospitalizations and deaths. So far, we've seen massive declines. And for example, the data out of Israel is completely compelling, 94 percent reductions. So I think, you know, the movement toward normalcy is the, this is the first step. Jason, there's been some really confusing headlines in the last 24 hours about the level of protection, the degree of protection existing vaccines give you against these new strains, particularly from South Africa. What's your read on that now? Yes, yeah, certainly um, some mixed signals. So first and foremost, uh, South Africa was getting ready to roll out the AstraZeneca vaccine. Uh, data from colleagues in the National Health Laboratory System identified that not only was there reduced efficacy in terms of infection, but there was also the potential for uh, antibody escape in that vaccine particularly. So they halted and set or have a million doses sitting on the shelves and have pivoted to the J&J &J vaccine in the country. We have to keep um, the genetics surveillance Surveillance, our foot on the pedal for genetic surveillance. We will continue to learn more and more about the potential for antibody escape in these vaccines. And it's really critical because the, each mutation is happening at a slightly different location on the spike protein. And so the new seven variants that we found in the United States, they're still under evaluation. We don't know yet, for example, if they're increased transmissibility, and we don't know yet if they have evade the immune response. How good is the U.S. at tracking these new variations? Not at all. Um, we, we have a significant need to ramp up genetic surveillance.